Hi folks, welcome back to the Bailey Workshop with guitarmaking.co.uk We just got took off air, I don't know if you noticed that, we were live, we got took off I'll tell you what happened, YouTube erroneously took us off air because they thought that that music we were playing wasn't licensed And it Hi was well. So they were wrong, they took us off air anyway I'm sure that's their website, they can do whatever they want. But that shows why... That shows why I haven't built my whole business around YouTube. Because they can do shenanigans like that. And they could just turn my whole channel off if they wanted. So what I've done is I've built my own guitar making academy all my most of my films 99 percent of my videos are all on my own website they're not on youtube so if you want to see all my good stuff go there and then we've got full guitar making courses from start to finish build your own guitar starting with a blank piece of paper and a pencil right through the process if this is your first time here on the channel then make sure you subscribe if you're interested in anything to do with guitars guitar making tips and tricks that's what I'm here for so um, make sure you like it and subscribe and share and do all that stuff if you find something in this video that's useful we're here today to talk about the bandsaw so here's a little dinky one and here's a bigger one I've got four different ones to show you today um, we're, we're starting again because we got took off air by YouTube so I've had to um, remake this live stream so uh, and my head's just about to explode, but we'll carry on anyway. So, um, today we're going to talk about the bandsaw. Everything you wanted to know about the bandsaw, but we're too afraid to ask. If you're looking to buy a bandsaw, then I'm not going to recommend an actual make or brand of bandsaw. What I'm going to say is, just buy the best one you can afford. That's my advice. So that's the, the quick version of this video, is just buy the best one you can. So if that's all you're interested in, then job done. I've done my bit, and you can go away and buy the best bandsaw you can afford. If you want to know a little bit more, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the bandsaw. And I can't believe YouTube took us off air for that. I'll get over it in a minute. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of the bandsaw and <clears throat> I'm going to show you a few things to watch out for if you're buying a guitar, if you're buying a, a bandsaw specifically for guitar making then there's a few things that you need to watch out for. Okay, So I'm going to show you what's important about a bandsaw um, with regards to guitar making um, and I'm also going to show you a few tips and tricks I'm going to um, show you how we change the blade and I've got some stuff to tell you about bandsaw blades and I'm going to show you uh, some tips and tricks of actually using one. So I'm going to cut some stuff out for you. We're going to actually uh, make some sawdust in a bit. But first of all, let's show you all the different parts of a bandsaw and then I'm going to change the blade for you because I get a lot of questions about how to change the blade and that kind of thing. So, here's the blade. Blade is one solid band, which is why it's called a bandsaw. They're usually welded. You can see uh, on this one, there's a weld there. Look. So um, you get different quality blades. It usually depends on um, whether the blade's ground or or the quality of the weld and that kind of thing. Um, the teeth point down. So if you can see the teeth there, they're pointing downwards, which um, actually helps you, oh, go away. Well, I'm working on it. So the teeth point down, that actually pushes your 
every time you switch it, it goes back to that. It comes back on. Oh. Teeth point down, press your piece of wood against the table, which helps. Keeps your piece of wood flat. So it's one solid band of metal, that's why they call it a bandsaw. So why do you need a bandsaw? Bandsaws are made for cutting um, curves. Yeah, we're not using the overhead, are we? So bandsaws are made for cutting curves. They're not very good for cutting straight lines. So most bandsaws will come with a fence. This is our fence for this little baby one. Well, on a cheap bandsaw like this, they're usually pretty useless. A bandsaw, it will only cut straight with a brand new blade on, and it will only cut straight for a couple of times before it starts to wander. Um, so these fence guides, um, they're pretty much useless except on a really expensive bandsaw. So we don't really use this too often, um, if at all. Most of the work we do is curved shapes anyway. So a curved shape, that's what bandsaws were invented for really, for making these curved shapes. I'm thinking about just cutting this and deleting the whole thing. How many viewers have we got? Have we got any questions? Yeah, we've got viewers. Do you want to, um, so Ian, somebody asked earlier on about um, their, uh, having, I didn't get the name on. Somebody asked about their bandsaw isn't cut in a straight line. Yeah, well that's what I just mentioned. Um, a bandsaw will only cut in a straight line with a brand new blade on it. Um, and even then it will only cut in a straight line for a very short amount of time before it starts to wander. So here's inside. It's only a little tiny one. It's so cute. But a big one's just exactly the same. So here you can see there's a view of the guides. So these guides are there to stop the blade from wandering from side to side. And we've got a close-up camera here, Carol, we can use. Um, bearing guides. This is quite a good little bandsaw, this one. Um, so the guides are there to stop the blade from wandering. And one of the most important parts is this. This is the, the guard. So this will go as low as possible, it goes up and down. So you set it as low as possible so your piece of wood just fits through. So here we have the drive wheel. And this is a guide wheel at the top. So the guide wheel is actually direct drive on this bandsaw, which is unusual. There's no, um, there's no belt, but usually there's a motor and the motor drives a belt, which drives the drive wheel. So there's normally some kind of brush to clean the wheel as well, to try and keep it clean. Um, but the belt is one of the replaceable parts. So when you buy a bandsaw, um, I would definitely buy a few spare blades and you might even want to consider buying a spare drive belt because it's probably the first thing that's going to go. So you've got the drive wheels and on the wheels are tyres. So that's another replaceable part. Sometimes the tyres break um, and they need replacing. There's a rubber tyre on the wheels and it saves the blade from getting mangled. So that's another replaceable part. They usually last for years, but um, it's likely to need replacing at some point. So the top wheel has what we call um, a tracking, a 
adjustment. And what that is, let's see if we can get a shot of the, the blade. So this tracking knob at the top it alters the alignment of the wheel alters the alignment of the wheel so it alters the tracking of the blade on the wheel there so if I spin that the blade is down the center of the tire but if I adjust the tracking a bit um, actually this one's blade tension on this one I'm gonna get you a bigger bandsaw out um, can I ask you EP says the tracking on this one is there and this one's the blade tension. So let me show you a bigger band saw and we'll go through that. Go on, we had a question? Well, it's just relevant. EP says my band saw blade keeps coming off the drive wheels, but he's not sure why. It used to work perfectly, but he's not sure what's changed. Yes, it'll be your tracking. Um, I'll show you on this one. Let me see if I can spin this round. Can you can you see this diagram here? There's actually a handy dandy diagram on this one. So this one here is the blade tension, you can see. It adds and removes tension. Um, on the top and then this one here is the tracking I'm not going to adjust it but you can see um, on the diagram there it, if I um, if I turn it this way it moves the blade forward on, to, on the wheel so who was that who asked the question about the tracking uh, well it was no it's EP saying that its blade comes off it used to work perfectly but now it keeps coming off the wheel Yes, so it's more than likely going to be, well, it's either the tension or the tracking. So um, if I spin this round now, maybe I can open it up. Let me show you the inside of this slightly bigger one. You'll see it's exactly the same. Perfect. You'll see it's exactly the same as the little one. It's got the blade, the the um, safety guard, the guides, bearing guides and lignum vitae guards, guides there. Uh, you've got a question about cutting point. Now you can see the belt on that one. Uh, hold on. Can you? Okay. Is that good enough? Yeah, so this one's got a drive belt most bandsaws do and that's one of the things that can wear out so i had one of my students he was uh, he was trying to operate his bandsaw and the blade just kept stopping and it was because all the teeth on the drive belt had worn out so the blade was just the the, the belt was just spinning and it wasn't enough power to drive the wheel so Okay. This one we have to take the guard off to change the blade. So I'm going to do that. Let's take this guard off. I'm going to actually change the blade for you. Well, can you answer a question whilst you're doing that? Yep. So Russ says, what is the minimum height required on the blade for cutting the body and the neck of a guitar? So, yeah, this is one of the two most important things when you're buying a bandsaw. So, um, um, I think it's actually the most important thing is the depth of cut. 
So the depth of cut is the distance, the height this can go, maximum height of the, of the guide. So the answer to your question is it depends on what sort of guitars you're making. Um, so if you're making just standard, most standard guitars, you only really need a two inch depth of cut. Now if you're making a set neck like this, then the biggest cut is where you cut this sideways there. So that's about four inches depth of cut. So um, if you can get a depth of cut of four inches or more, that's ideal. You might want a bigger bandsaw than that if you're doing things like making caps. Let me just show you a cap. What I'll do is at the end, I'll summarize all this stuff. So here's a cap. So that started out life as one piece of wood like this. And then somebody with a great big bandsaw has cut it down the middle so that it opens out like a book. Now that is, on most guitars are about 13 inches. So half of 13 inches, six and a half inches. So if you can get a bandsaw that's got like a seven inch or greater depth of cut, then you might even be able to make your own caps. Um, so this one is actually just big enough. That's why I bought that one. Yeah, that's why I bought this one because it's just big enough with the guard right up. We can get, maybe not this one, but a smaller one will fit through there. I can actually, or you can see there's a bit of spare. So if we chop that off, I can actually make caps with this, but you'll need, for that kind of thing, you'd need a brand new blade. And I could maybe make one, two, three caps, depending on the wood. Um, five would be tops. Um, but the blade will start to wander and it won't cut as perfectly straight um, after a while. And then you end up with the, the cap not matching properly. Um. Um, there's a question, uh, Ian Gemmell says, is there a Goldilocks blade that's good for those jobs? Is there a, is there a blade that does everything? If so, what I'm going to tell you about blades in a minute. Okay. Just, just a sec. I'm actually going to change this blade and I'll tell you all about that now. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you can get a seven inch or greater depth of cut, that's ideal. And acoustic guitars, well, that's, that's 16 inches. So to make an acoustic, book matched you need an eight inch or bigger bandsaw really it's probably out of the range of most people to get one that'll actually do that is probably thousands rather than hundreds but for most people if you spend two to three hundred pounds you'll get an awesome bandsaw awesome if you spend one to two hundred pound you'll get one that's perfectly adequate like um, like my first bandsaw which I'll show you in a minute let's change the blade then so we're going to release the tension. This is the tension adjustment. Release the tension. Let's take this blade off and then I'll show you about blades. Release the tension. And I can take this blade off. So there it is, one long solid band, hence the name bandsaw. Um, right, I'm going to show you some different sizes. I keep all my old blades. <laughs> Every now and again I have a clear out, but um, let's have a look what we've got. So my standard blade that I use mostly is 3 eighths of an inch wide. So you've got the width of the blade, let's see if we can get a close up. 
and close up cam. So the width of the blade, this one's three eighths, and then um, there's the one that I took off. So different sizes. Um, yeah, this is the one that's most versatile. It's three eighths of an inch. Uh, and the number of teeth per inch is called the skip. So this is six skip, six teeth per inch. So it's quite a rough blade. It's ideal for most of our purposes, 90%. Um, except for if I'm cutting straight lines, then I might want to put a chunkier blade on. So I use this half inch blade. It's six skip again. I use the half inch for cutting straight lines like if I was making a cap. I've actually got a three quarter inch. Which goes on the, um, on the big bandsaw. Even better for making caps. So we use the, the big wide blades for cutting straight lines and then the narrower ones for cutting curves and as most of the work we do involves cutting curves then we mostly use the three eighths as I showed you three eighths six skip is the one you want um, so for <coughs> excuse me for a metal cutting blade the teeth are a lot closer together so you might be looking at 12 14 skip or even more teeth per inch 20 teeth per inch um, if you look at say a hacksaw blade you'll see the teeth are a lot smaller and closer together um, finer blades for removing less material per cut um, with wood we can take off more material at once so it has a, a coarser tooth um, six teeth per inch and we call it six skip and i use three eighths of an inch wide blades so three eighths of an inch, six skip is ideal blades for most of our purposes. Right, I did order some brand new blades. I was gonna put a brand new blade on it, but they didn't arrive because the post has gone all crazy at the moment, hasn't it? So let's just put on, I'm gonna, like I said, I do keep all my old blades just in case I need to use one. And this one feels like it might still have some life in it. So let's put this one on. This is the 3 8 6 skip I'm going to put on my general purpose blade. I'm going to put it on here and show you how we do it. We've got a question. Well, it's about used blades. So TV says, does a used blade start to wander because it's stretched slightly? And if so, can you retension it? No. The reason that it starts to wander is because what happens is one side of the blade starts to get a bit more worn than the other side and then it just starts to wander. Um, as, as your best bet with bandsaws if you do want to cut straight lines is keep one blade just for cutting straight lines. That will help because then both sides of the blades will be getting even wear. What happens is as soon as you cut one curve on the bandsaw then it will never cut a straight line again because one side of that blade will be worn more than the other side as you go around the, cu the curve so it's it's to do with wear it uneven wear because um, you can put as much tension on as you want that won't help you'll just end up snapping your blade so hopefully that answers the question um, yeah when you buy your bandsaw I would like I said earlier I would recommend buy two spare blades with it and then you're, you're sorted for a while um, the blade that they're supplied with isn't usually very good so I would usually it, it, they don't last very long the blade that they're supplied with are usually pretty rubbish so buy a decent blade um, to replace it got another question well what you're getting is you are getting two things campus Lang Steve says you are really good at explaining things thanks Steve clearly appreciate it and um, thanking you for the tips 
on the thing so far. Really good. Cheers. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what we're for. Make sure you hit the like button then. <laughs> Someone called Bob May is telling TV that um, sometimes, or usually a blade wanders because the set on one side is worn. Is that something you've experienced? Well, that's exactly what I just said. Was oh, you not listening? Okay. I wasn't listening. Thanks, whoever that was. Bob. Bob. Yeah. Bob Foreman. My fault, I wasn't listening. Right, so we put the blade on. And then make sure it's in the guides. And then we add the tension back. So people always ask, how much tension do we put on? Um, Well, I would say you want about, no more than about half an inch of play. Uh, having said that, I'm not a bandsaw expert. I'm not an expert on bandsaws by any means. I'm just a guitar maker. So check your manual. It will probably tell you in your manual when you buy it. Um, if you don't get a manual, then I would say just, you don't want more than half an inch of play. So we'll add the tension back. Now because this bandsaw has been set up before, I know that I can adjust the tension until the blade tracks in the centre of the tyre again. Because I've already set the track in before. So when you when you adjust the tension it may attract it may affect the track in. So you want to get your tension right first. See there we go, that's fine. About half an inch of play. Um, it's not entirely critical um, and then what I would do is just give it a slow spin just to check everything make sure it's not catching on the guides make sure the guides are all set up so that they're just clearing the blade that all looks good to me so we can shut this and then what I always do once it's all closed and safe, we'll put the guard back on. And what I do is I just I turn it on and off really fast, uh, just to check um, nothing's going to explode. Which I'm sure it won't. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this back on, and then I'm gonna do some cuts. And I'm gonna demonstrate a few bandsaw techniques for you. So let's hope there's some life in that blade. Guard back on. So there's a few things to watch out for when you're using the bandsaw. The bandsaw is one of the tools that a lot of people are a little bit afraid of. When people come to the workshop for the first time, um, yeah, the bandsaw is one of the things that they might be a little bit more afraid of than others. But I'm here to tell you that it is actually one of the tamest tools in the workshop. I find it quite relaxing using the bandsaw. It's not at all a white knuckle ride. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be at all scary really when you're using it. People are a bit apprehensive sometimes, but after the first time I've showed them how to use it, then they're fine with it. I had one, one lad turn up and he actually, he didn't want to use the bandsaw. He said, I, I, I'll do everything, but I don't want to use the bandsaw. I said, that's, that's fine, I, I don't mind. You know, if you come on my course and there is something you don't want to do, I'm quite happy to do it for you. Um, 
but it's never happened because I showed him the safe way to use it and he was like ah you could see the light go on in his head and he was like oh I could do that it's not as scary as you might think so we bring the guard down as low as we can get it and we can still cut the wood um, yeah so here's the important bit health and safety we're all guitar players or at least I am and I know most of you are um, count your fingers before and after using any power tool um, and I'm not joking we're all guitar players these things are really important for playing guitar and the bandsaw could change that so heaven forbid touch wood if anything ever happened in here and somebody lost a digit then that would be it I'm not running any more courses after that so I don't want you to be the person who ruins it for everybody all right so no chopping your fingers off count your fingers before and after using any sharp tools right well I'll show you how that can happen and how that should never happen um, in my whole experience of working with bandsaws I've only ever witnessed one accident and that was in the guitar factory which shall not be named back in the day I'll show you what he did wrong and why you should never do that there's really no excuse for that is there Tony and I bet you felt pretty stupid <laughs> It needed, it needed a plaster, it went right down to the bone. Well you were very lucky, you were very lucky, if that's all it needed. Right, here's the, um, the drop top guitar that I glued up on a previous live stream. You can see this is a drop top body blank, it's got this elbow carve on it, um, built in. So when you're making a drop top, we put the shape into the back of the body and then we glue the the cap on that was done on a previous live stream you can search for that on the channel if you're interested um, so I'm going to have a go at cutting this shape out I'll do the camera now I don't normally cut the shape out at this point as I said uh, on the last stream when I'm marking this out um, well I'm always saying this I meet a lot of people who say yeah I'm making a guitar and all they've done really is they've got a piece of wood and they've cut the shape of a guitar out well really cutting it out is the easy bit the hard bit is doing all the, the other jobs and making sure everything's in the right place um, so we cover all that in the course and on the design course um, the reason I'm bringing it up here is because I haven't done these jobs yet so normally I wouldn't be cutting this shape out. So I'm doing this in the wrong order, um, just so that I can demonstrate how to cut this out for you guys. Um, the reason we do all the other machining first normally, it's just easier to work with a big solid lump of wood. Once you've cut an awkward shape out like this, it becomes a bit more awkward to hold, that's all. So we can still make the guitar I'm just going to make it a little bit more difficult for myself by cutting the shape out first but hey I'm an expert so I'm going to show you how we cut a shape like this out because I know that's all you want to see really you want to see some guitars getting cut out right some things so um, Let me show you how the guy managed to injure himself at our factory and then I'll show you how to do it right. So what he did was he was cutting his piece of wood and I see this a lot. Let's say, let's say I'm cutting this piece of wood, right? Is that then, close enough? Yeah, that's perfect. Then. The mistake that I see a lot of people make, and you'll see this on YouTube, I see it all the time. Um, 
I did leave a few comments on a few guys' videos, but then I just thought, um, yeah, I'm just being an ass, so let's not bother. So I just keep my opinions to myself nowadays, but I do cringe when I see a lot of guys cutting stuff out on bandsaws. And this is what they do. I'm not going to switch it on. Is they do this. And then as they cut, their fingers get closer and closer to the bandsaw. And they're doing this. Please don't do this, folks. Please don't. Just don't do it. So don't play chicken with the bandsaw, is what I say. Don't do that. There's no need. You can put your hands, look, what I do is I put my hand there and rest my hand on the edge of the table. And there's no way that I can slip. And then when I'm cutting, my piece of wood goes through. So I'm using this as a guide and this, this other hand to push. So I go all the way through until I can't anymore. Then I'll reach through and pull it. So you can pull it. Obviously I'll tie my hair back so my hair doesn't go down the hole. There's no need to put my hands anywhere near the blade. So the number one rule of the bandsaw is don't play chicken with the bandsaw. I've seen guys, their hands get closer and closer and closer. And if you do this in my workshop, it's the only time you'll ever hear me shout. Don't do it. And that's what the guy did in, in our factory. And he, he cut right down the middle of his nail. Yeah, horror stories. Right down the middle of his nail because he was doing that. Please don't do that. Right. Let's stick that on there. See if we can get a decent shot with the other camera. That'll have to do. So let me cut this body shape out for you. Now the tricky bits, the tricky bits are these horns. The rest of the shape, it will go down round pretty much in one. The bandsaw is made for cutting curves. But what we don't do is we don't force it around a tight curve. We're going to make sure we leave the line on and um, just a little word on accuracy. So how close to the line do we cut? Well, if you're making it by hand, then you cut as close to the line as you can. Make sure you don't cut through the line. But as you saw in the last live stream, hopefully anyway, you've seen this and you'll know about this if you've done the course. Most cutting out jobs in here is a two stage operation. So we're going to use this pattern here to copy the shape. Once we've, um, once we've cut it out, then we stick the pattern on and we copy the shape with the router. I'll show you that next week. But this week, I'm just going to cut it out. So if we're doing it um, by hand, that's, that's cutting out as neatly as we can. If we're going to use the router, then we need to leave something for the router to do. So I say leave a mil and a half to two mil. Okay, a mil and a half to two mil outside the line. We're going to use the router to finish it off. So a lot of these cuts when we're making guitars, there's two cuts. We do a rough cut and a smooth cut. In this case, we're going to do the rough cut with the bandsaw. And then next week, I'll show you on Saturday um, how we do um, profiling with the router to do the fine pass to make it and it makes uh, cuts it out really neatly it makes it exactly the same shape um, whereas with the bandsaw you can see it leaves quite a rough cut so don't play chicken with the bandsaw Carol keep your hands as far away as possible from the blade don't try and force the blade around a corner that's too tight Don't try and dig yourself into a hole. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I think what I'll do first is I'm going to do the easy cut all the way around the outside. Start here. I'm going to have to stay this side. You see that? So 
here's the whole trick folks with the bandsaw. If you go wonky, Yeah, there's always a risk of this, folks. That blade that I put on isn't sharp enough. I don't think. I'll, I'll try one more time, but I don't think it's, it's sharp enough to cut. Actually, it's perfectly fine. The problem is, because I took a larger blade off, what's happening is the blade's moving back and it's not, it's not um, hitting the guide. So I, didn't, I forgot to adjust the guide at the back. Let's try that. So the blade's moving back and that's causing it to wander. Um, that is something you've got to watch for. Um, that might be one thing that's causing your blade to wander. Is the guides aren't set up correctly. So let me just fix that. Yeah, all of our live streams are a bit pear shaped, guys. Um, it's live, isn't it? Um, what I've done with the courses on the website is everything's edited. So we don't have any of this messing about when things go wrong. Let's try that. How can you, how can you tell um, that you said the, bla the blade wasn't right then? Um, yeah, it wouldn't cut. It wouldn't cut straight. It was wandering. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's better. I um, want you to notice what I'm doing. Not my face, Carol, down here. I want you to notice what I'm doing is I'm always pulling it back. So I go forwards and then when I go wonky, I'll pull it back and then carry on. So this is what I mean by don't dig yourself out of a hole. Um, don't keep carrying on forwards if you're going wonky. What you can do is just pull it back and then carry on. Let me demonstrate that. It's going really well today, isn't it? I managed to get the blade jammed in the body now. What a pro. Oh, Yes, yeah, stopping your blade in halfway through like that isn't always a good idea because you can get it jammed. But what you can do is just wedge it to get your blade out. You can just wedge it open. Should be enough just to start it up. Carry on. Uh, I'm fighting against it here folks because of my new blades didn't turn up so I'm using an old blade and it's not cutting very well um, you can see I'm struggling to get it to turn so this is a it felt sharp but obviously there's there's um there's some wear on the blade that's causing it to not not cut correctly so I'll, I'll try a different blade like I say I keep all my old blades just for times like this when um, 
when for one reason or another we can't get one. I'm going to show you a, a, a little bonus tip then. A little bonus tip. We'll unplug it before we open it. Switch it off at the wall. Get rid of this. you would completely give up on a bandsaw you know, like you're showing people different techniques to cure issues but when would you know that it's most no. I'm just going to snap that go wrong otherwise we don't know how to deal with real life problems when they happen to us all as long as somebody's enjoying it so I need to just um, get a little wedge in there just to, so I can get my blade out Wedges. <sighs> Stick a couple of wedges in it and that will open the crack enough to get the blade out I'll show you something useful in a minute to do it. Right, these old bandsaw blades, let me show you this. If you fold it up, you have to be a bit careful, you might want to wear gloves for this. But I've got hands like leather, so it doesn't bother me. Um, fold it up in half, and again, and again, Okay. 
Well, if you set that in a handle, set that in a handle, it makes a like a homemade rasp. Maybe do two or three of them together. Watch this. Rasp. Shall I do it here? Can you see it there? Homemade rasp. It's actually pretty rough. You can do well with it. Um, little trick there. But I don't think I've actually got a decent blade. So now what do we do? Try a different blade. I'm going to try one more and if this doesn't work then we'll have to do something else. Uh, you can see it didn't take long to change. tension okay guard back on so Try that again. This is actually um, my second bandsaw. I'm going to show you my first bandsaw before we leave and I'm going to show you my new one as well. We'll just give it a quick jab make sure it's okay. Alright let's try that then. So when you start wandering towards your line instead of carrying on forwards you're going to pull it back and then carry on. So that's what happens when the blade's worn out completely, is it won't even cut. So I've managed to get two blades stuck in now. Uh, I think the sensible thing to do now is not to try that for the third time because that would be the definition of insanity. Um, new blades didn't arrive. What I should have done is postponed it till next week, eh? We learn by our mistakes. Keep going. I can't keep going, Carol. The blade's stuck in the body again. Well, we'll abandon that. I am going to delete this live stream when I'm finished because it's gone. Everything's gone wrong. Right, I'm going to show you my first bandsaw, just to show you that you don't need to spend a fortune. Here it is. Oh. Discontinued, I think. There he is. Oh. First band saw. I made 60 guitars with this, believe it or not. 
just to show you that it can be done. Um, this one's knackered now. So um, yeah, we had a question earlier is how do you know when your bandsaw's worn out completely? Um, well, and I said, well, you'll know. This one's worn out completely. The tires have gone on the inside. Uh, but because of what I do, because I run courses, I do need to have two bandsaws. Um, because if one breaks, then I need to have another one ready to go straight away. Because people c come from all over the world to build their guitars in this little workshop. Um, and they've got flights booked home, so they can't not finish because the bandsaw didn't work. So I have to have two. Unfortunately, I've got four here and none of them work. Because um, the blades are all worn out on all of them. But this is my new one. So there's really no difference. I'll show you inside. exactly the same as before just a bit bigger they can't see any of that Carol so this is my new one it's a bit bigger than the old one apart from that that's the only difference um, let's change the blade on it anyway Maybe we can get this one to cut. Another one. Again, it's just, this blade's used, so it's probably no sharper than the others. Bit of tension. Again, there's no, it's not scientific or anything. I'm going to give it a spin and make sure it's tracking in the same place as before. Make sure it's tracking in the centre of the wheel. Half an inch of play. Close enough for me, but So this one's handy, it's actually on wheels, look. You can move it about. So, let's see if I can get this one to cut. Yeah, I reset the guide, didn't I? Anyway, everybody's saying it's fine for them. Well, it's fine for them, but... I'll say leave it, won't you? I want to see if it cuts.
I'll tell you what, let's try a thinner piece. That'll help. Um, I'm going to move this bantle over there so you can see it go. Wow, that was freaky. What <laughs> watching yourself move? No, it moved, yeah. I didn't see you moving it. <laughs> I thought the whole world was sliding for a minute. Well, I think you've proven the point that truck skimping on um, bandsaw blades isn't worthwhile, is it? Those are just old blades, they're good blades, they're just old. Exactly. So, so you yes, can... so um, longevity of bandsaw blades. I change my blade every time I'm running a course. About if That's about every four guitars is a new blade. And there's, cer there's certain jobs you always do when you get a new blade, don't there? Yeah, any cutting straight lines with a new blade. Of course, my bandsaw is normally in a different place. I've moved it here just to show you guys, and it's, it's a bit awkward. Let's just see if it's cutting. So, when you get little bits of wood like that, you use a stick. A piece of scrap wood to knock it off. Never use your hands. We'll try it. Um, so that is what I would call a, an extreme tight curve. So any curves that are tighter than that, then um, you cannot force the bandsaw around a curve. You have to let it cut. So if you imagine like uh, that great big half inch blade or the three quarter I showed you earlier, that's only going to cut a very gentle curve or straight lines preferably. If you want to cut fine curves, you need a finer blade. Um, this is actually too fine a curve for the 3 8 blade that we use as standard. So we use this technique. We're just going to cut some straight lines and then use straight lines to join it up to make this curve. Okay. So when I'm cutting a neck out like this, I would cut this bit first and then that gives me something to aim towards when I'm cutting down this line. So I'll just demonstrate that, see what happens. So, health and safety, tie my hair back. So I'm going to cut in and out a few times. and steady down the line and you'll notice that if I start to wander towards the line I'm going to pull it back to carry on rather than try and dig myself out of a hole. So if I wander towards the line I'm going to stop, pull it back and then carry on. See that?
notice how far away my hands are. Zoom out a bit, Carol. My hands are as far away as they can possibly be. So there's, uh, that's how you use a bandsaw basically. Um, that little wobble that I did deliberately there, you can see how it looks quite rough, but it doesn't matter because we're going to use the router to take a nice smooth cut and finish that off. So it'll be done with um, the second pass with the router will finish that off nicely. So it doesn't matter if you, if you do a really terrible job like I did of cutting it out because the router will fix it. Um, yeah, I want to show you one more technique with the router then. Uh, a couple of things that are interesting. When you're cutting thin pieces of wood, um, sometimes if I'm cutting thin pieces, what I'll do is um, bits, little, bit, little bits of wood can go down into the hole. So when you're cutting fine pieces, sometimes I'll make another table. Just with a piece of scrap wood like that. It just makes it, gives a bit of support to the smaller piece. And I want to show you another technique now. Get your pencil anywhere, Carol. So I'm going to draw a little shape on this piece of wood here. Um, in fact, let's do this one. I'm going to do it on here. So this is a. Um, now I will use the thin piece because I've still got my table on. So. Imagine this is a shape we're cutting out. Can't see. Just a simple, any shape will do. I'll do another any one there. Let's say we're making a kind of handle shape. So we can cut it like this, obviously normal. standard bandsaw technique. Now I want to show you another technique where we can actually use a bandsaw like a file. Watch this. in the side of the blade to cut. To file the shape.
So you can use a bandsaw like a file. So another thing is if you're cutting smaller pieces, let's just bung this on. I'm gonna put my fence on. So this this bandsaw is a little bit a little bit more expensive and a bit beefier, and there's a fence on it, which is a bit more usable. But even so, um, because the blade's worn, it still won't it won't cut a straight line. I guarantee it won't work on the fence if we try and cut a straight line. Um, it might work on really thin pieces of wood, but on a chunky piece, it's going to go wander. So I want to demonstrate. I'll use a thin piece just to demonstrate then, using this fence. So let's say I want to cut along there, but this piece of wood's very small. Look how small it is, I'm risking my fingers. That's not allowed. So we use what we call a push stick. Okay, so when you're using smaller, when you're trying to cut smaller pieces, um, if it's too small for a push stick, then don't bother. Just find a way to do it by hand. Otherwise, um, use a push stick for smaller pieces. Okay, let's see if we can get that going. So there's a little hook in it which you can use. What you saw happen there was the piece went under the fence. That's uh, that's one thing that can happen. You have to be aware of if you're cutting smaller pieces. The way to avoid that is again is to use a, a table underneath. Make an extra table with a piece of scrap wood. Just like that. Now I think that's everything you need to know about bandsaws really. Um, most important thing, don't play chicken with the bandsaw. There's absolutely no need to run your fingers down the, to get close to the blade like this. Don't do it. Um, keep your hands as far away from the blade as possible. So you saw me when I was cutting out, keeping my hands miles away from the blade. I'm like this, definitely not like that. Don't try and force the blade around a curve that's too tight. Instead, you can do straight cuts and then join them up with a thing to do that. Don't be forcing the blade around because it won't go. Um, don't dig yourself out of a hole, which means as you're cutting, instead of trying to carry on forward when you go wonky, you just pull it back and then you can carry on. So don't dig yourself out of a hole. We're always cutting outside the line. Uh, Ferrera la linea, if you're Italian. Ferrera la linea. And the accuracy depends upon um, whether you're going to be routing it. If it's a two stage operation, like in this case, I'm going to be using a route at a profile, then you want to aim for about a mil and a half to two mil outside the line. If you're making it completely by hand, then you want to cut it out as accurately as you can. Um, get as close to the line as possible, but make sure you don't go through the line. <laughs> so we got there in the end. We did it against the odds. And EP just said, I know you found it stressful, but I think we learn more when things go wrong. Like you just showed the thing slipping under the guide bar and TB seconded it. And um, it is stressful for you. Yeah, well, I appreciate your patience, guys. And the courses, there's none of that on any of the courses, so it makes it easier. Yeah, well, the, there was a few things that go wrong on the on the course that I show you how to fix. Like, if you snap a drill off, um, I can't remember. But usually, 
what I do on all my lessons is I show you um, I show you how to do the job and then I show you um, what to do if it goes wrong. Um, Thomas says, is there no possibility to regenerate bandsaw blades, you know, the teeth or anything? To... It's a very good question. I would suggest um, not. Maybe there's places where you can have them sharpened. Um, on these kind of small kind of like these are really sort of hobby size bandsaws really um it's probably cheaper just to replace the blade the blades are between 10 and 15 pound for this kind of size um so you'd probably pay more than that to have them sharpened that's probably why people don't have their bandsaw blade sharpened um in a, on a big industrial scale where they've got huge tree sized bandsaws maybe they do Maybe they have them reground, but but we don't. Um, it's easier and cheaper just to just to buy a new blade. What um, did you do? What did you do with one of your blades this summer, Mark? You repurposed. Oh, you you, I made a hoe. <laughs> I made a garden hoe. From uh, that's a subject for another video, though. Um, you've got yeah, you can repurpose the blades, the old blades. It's, it's some kind of tool steel, spring steel, or something. So there are actually a number of uses for these things. Um, I've shown you one. Um, maybe if you've got any ideas, guys, reclaimed bandsaw blades, uses for, back scratcher. I've got another question. Way back early on, Ian Gemmell said that he's about to, he's going to have a go at gluing a neck in. Hi, Ian. Um, and he's saying he's got, he hasn't got any, he's got general builders like wood glue, uh, not type bond or anything. So is, is it okay to use general glue um, or should he wait until he's got some type bond? Actually, gluing is one of the, um, gluing is one of the guitar making techniques that's coming up in a, in a few weeks. Um, I've got about nine or ten guitar making techniques. Um, we're on number three today, which is the bandsaw. Um, number one was the intro, then we did marking out, we've got bandsaw, next week's routing. At some point, I'm going to be doing a whole live stream which is just just about glue, right? So we're going to cover all the different types of glue that we use. And I do like to use tight bond for gluing the necks. But on an acoustic guitar, for instance, if it's a joint that we might want to disassemble one day, like an acoustic guitar neck, then I use just ordinary white wood glue, um, PVA. Ordinary white PVA wood glue is ideal because um, it's, uh, it's removable with heat. So you just warm the joint up uh, and eventually it will release and you can get the neck out again. That's really handy for an acoustic guitar. Um, every, maybe every 20 years, um, one of the guitar making repair techniques is to take the neck off and reset the neck angle. Um, so you, you can't do that if you've glued it on with a permanent glue, like tight bond is more permanent. You can actually get tight bond to release, but it's a lot harder. Um, and I'm reliably informed by um, Darren King, who's our resident glue expert. Um, not resident, Darren works for bagpress.com. Darren is bagpress.com and he uses all sorts of different glues in his lamination techniques and he told me that that actually tight bond it's just a different formulation so it's actually the same stuff really just a different formulation um, tight bond you need a lot more heat to make it release ordinary white glue it's perfectly usable um, you can use ordinary white glue for all guitar making if you like it can be the only glue that you use it's fine the only problem that you might get with it is it does suffer from what we call plastic creep and that's because when it warms up it moves so if you leave your guitar in a warm car this is like the you know the the, the fable that goes around that you leave your guitar in a hot car and the neck falls off or the neck moves um, or you leave it on a hot beach in the sun and um, the neck can actually move under the string tension and then when it goes cold it will set in the same position 
um, so that can that can ruin your guitar. Um, but if you don't get it hot, if you keep your guitar under normal conditions, um, white glue is fine. You shouldn't be subjecting your guitar to those conditions anyway. So white glue is perfectly acceptable for guitar making. But if I'm doing the glue that I'd like to be more permanent, then I would my glue of choice would be tight bond. Hopefully that makes sense. There's lots of other types of glue we use as well. I'll cover them in a different live stream. Um, so do we have any final questions before we wrap it up? I do appreciate you guys um, encouraging me, especially when things go wrong, because <laughs> you can tell how much I hate it when things go wrong. Um, I like things to go not wrong. So at least you got to see what we can do when things go wrong, you can put it right. Um, if you did find anything useful and it's your first time here or you're not already subscribed, I want you to bandsaw the like button. Yeah, because people might have liked it. I want you to get your monitor and run it through the bandsaw until you hit the subscribe button. Okay? No, people, people might have liked the, the first one and we had to take that off, didn't we? Because of the... Yes, so I'm, I had to delete the previous attempt at our live stream because YouTube took it off. They took us off air for playing that tune at the start and it was our tune can't believe it I'm going to be taking that up with YouTube don't we worry about that and um, I will see you on Wednesday for workshop Wednesday let's hope it goes a little bit smoother than, <laughs> than this one so workshop Wednesday I've no idea what I'm gonna do it'll be a surprise to us all but I'm sure it's gonna be good so one o'clock Wednesday see you then one o'clock Saturday we're gonna be doing everything you wanted to know about the router but we're too afraid to ask. So that's going to be a good one. We've got a final question. Well, well just one last thing that, that Clinton, Clint, who, who is super clunk, he, um, thanks to him for supporting us, he joined us as a supporter um, after last. Oh, um, cheers, super clunk for supporting us. So yeah, if the, the links are all in the description below if you want to, um, if you want to support us, you can be a supporter or if you want to get on the, um, the main courses, there's over 400 videos where start to finish build your own guitar. Most of my videos are on my own website because um, as you've seen, YouTube can just decide to take you off and they don't even need to give you a reason. So um, I've built my own guitar making academy and I've spent the last four or five years putting a lot of work into making videos and they're all on there. So to watch those, you need to be a premium member um, so head over and check that out it's free to join the forums completely free and you can download a whole set of plans and patterns for free um, if you head over to guitarmaking.co.uk so before I lose my voice um, I'm gonna say cheerio thanks guys for watching smash like no don't smash it bandsaw it I want pictures of your monitors running through the bandsaw <laughs> Cheers guys, right, remember, measure twice, cut once. See you at one o'clock Wednesday.